There is one Mac in this studio that I simply cannot stop using, even though I probably should. Well, would you believe it? It has been ages since I made a video about the M1 Mac Mini. If you watch this channel regularly, firstly, thank you, but you may also have found this rather refreshing. Or equally, you may have missed my constant gushing about Apple's tiny desktop powerhouse. Probably not though. Either way, I'm gonna talk about it again today for one very simple reason. So when I moved into this new studio space last year, I thought I'd pay homage to my M1 Mac Mini by placing it in a kind of wall art thing. So a little bit like this deconstructed iPhone 4S I've got behind me, I thought I'd do the same thing with my M1 Mac Mini just to kind of forever encase it on the wall and admire it, mainly because I didn't think I needed it anymore. And that was thanks to the arrival of my universe bending M1 Max powered 16 inch MacBook Pro. As it turns out, that was rather short sighted. In fact, I wrote the outline for this video and the corresponding blog post on my M1 Mac mini. I really cannot let this thing go. And I think I've worked out why. So before we get started, a quick word from today's sponsor, Trend Micro and their brilliant premium security suite. So if you're looking for a complete all-in-one solution for device and identity protection in your home, this could be absolutely perfect for you. And it's amazing how much premium security suite packs in for quite a low fee. It includes a VPN, password manager, mobile security, ID security, and protection against ransomware, email scamming, and other forms of cybercrime. Even better, it works across Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Chromebooks. Therefore, every device in your household will get involved and be completely protected. It's also super easy to install, and there is 24 seven human-based support on offer from Trend Micro. Now, like all of Trend Micro stuff, I use quite a lot of it myself. Each of the applications that comes with the premium security suite is super easy to use and I just love the fact it's a one-stop solution for everything you need to remain safe online and they don't cut any corners either it's all top quality stuff for instance their VPN is utterly brilliant so if you're in a coffee shop and want a safer experience on their Wi-Fi network, or if you just want your kids' smartphones to be protected from the dark web, Premium Security Suite is there for you. Now, I only accept sponsorships from products that I know and trust, and I love Trend Micro stuff. So to find out more, just click the link in my description. So what is it about the M1 Mac Mini? Why do I keep making videos about it, keep writing about it, and why do other people keep doing the same thing? To the outside world, the Mac Mini is Apple's least interesting product, I think. It's a Mac, sure, but it's encased in the most uninspiring body and has none of the kind of why didn't I think of that design features that Apple is so good at devising. It's just a box with some computer stuff inside. It doesn't even come with a mouse or keyboard or even a monitor. So why is it so coveted? Why, prior to the launch of the M1 chip, were so many people crying out for a new version of the Mac Mini? I think it's pretty simple. The Mac Mini is Apple's most accessible Mac. It's the cheapest of the lot, and it doesn't force you to use Apple's expensive and often crippled peripherals. Hello, Magic Mouse. And thanks to the thermal efficiency of that M1 chip, it can be tucked away literally anywhere. My podcast co-host Rob has his inner drawer beneath his desk and he's never had any trouble with it. And the Mac Mini offers so many potential use cases. It's an incredibly cost-effective content creation machine. I used mine, the one over there, for 80 videos for this channel. So I produced 80 videos, 4K stuff, for this channel with no trouble whatsoever. It's also a great Mac to give your kids if they wanna get into the world of Mac OS. And beyond that, it's the perfect glue, as they call it, for processing requirements in the world of professional media production. As I've noted recently, the Mac Mini is even capable of having a dust up with its bigger brother, the Mac Studio. In fact, in that particular fight, I think the Mac Mini would escape with nothing more than a slightly bruised fist. I'd still argue that for the vast majority of users, a fully spec'd up M1 Mac Mini will be a far more sensible purchase out of the Mac Mini and the Mac Studio. I did make a video about this, which I'll link to above. This tiny little Mac is as lovable and unbelievably as capable as the M1 MacBook Air. That's how good it is. So you might be wondering why on earth I've kept the M1 Mac Mini in this studio. After all, I've got a super expensive 16 inch MacBook Pro over there for all things production. I've still got the base level M1 MacBook Air for mobile blogging duties. And yes, the 24 inch iMac is somehow still in my kitchen. I've thought about this quite a lot, probably too much. And I think there are a few compelling reasons not to give up that M1 Mac Mini just yet. The first is that it is so damn easy to use. I leave it switched off overnight, it never gets 
left on. And if I come in in the morning, I need to do some stuff on the Mac Mini, there's no delay pretty much in terms of booting it up. And once booted, it is still as smooth as butter when it comes to opening and navigating around my various apps. It therefore fills that kind of occasional use role absolutely perfectly. Secondly, the Mac Mini is the only device I have attached to an ultra wide monitor. I still have a huge soft spot for my 34 inch MSI monitor, despite having access to Apple's overly pricey, but utterly beautiful studio display. And this is one of the best things about the Mac Mini. It forces you to build a kind of mini ecosystem of peripherals and accessories around it. For me, that ecosystem consists of the MSI ultra wide monitor, an Iquinix F96 keyboard, which is fantastic, and the brilliant Logitech MX Master 3, which I promise I'll stop talking about at some point. Lastly, the M1 Mac Mini is actually an amazing backup production machine. So I know that if I have any trouble with my 16 inch MacBook Pro, I can turn to that Mac Mini and get stuff done. So what do I want from the next Mac Mini? Not much. There have been some exciting rumors about a more colorful product line and numerous murmurings about a much thinner chassis, but I'm not too fussed about that stuff. Like most people, I would like a few more ports and the addition of the M1 Pro chip would be amazing and it would just kind of keep the Mac Mini chugging along the marginal gains tracks we're now on with Apple Silicon. Oh, and Apple, please fix the Bluetooth issues. They are still an issue. I've made videos about this in the past. I won't go on about it now, but there are some problems with Bluetooth on this thing that just seem to be an, an inherent issue with that chassis. So please fix that. That's I think that's a kind of legacy thing with the Mac Mini. If they can fix that, give us more ports, give us the M1 Pro chip, I'd be happy. But I'd love to know how you're using your current Mac Mini get involved in the comments. To find out how I use another very important Mac in this studio, keep watching for a link to a video I made recently where I reveal my powerhouse production MacBook Pro.